أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. so I just like to start by um, just like to start by uh, thanking um, uh, Sohail and Saab and the whole AWMS team uh, for inviting me here to this this amazing symposium and allowing me to provide my humble contribution to to this this fascinating day yesterday today and I'm sure tomorrow. So Jazakallah for that. I'm really humbled for the invite. In the next ten minutes, what I want to do is talk uh, briefly, very briefly about unlocking the power and promise of genomics and personalized medicine in the light of the teachings of the Holy Quran. So my presentation. It's not changing. Oh, it has now. It has now. It's a little bit of delay. Exactly. So in the, in, the, in the Holy Quran, Allah emphasizes the importance of seeking knowledge and understanding the world around us. In uh, chapter 3, verse 191 of uh, Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of the night and the day, there are indeed signs for men for understanding. So the Holy Quran provides guidance to all Muslims on the wisdom of what, we, what, what and how he creates. The Holy Quran also highlights the importance of understanding the purpose behind everything that Allah has created, and that includes our DNA. When it comes to life on Earth, DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is the basic unit that encodes biological information. Encoding within the DNA are the directions of traits, traits like eye color, our skin color, our height, how we respond to a, a, a disease. And although each organism DNA is unique, DNA has the same all DNA has the same chemical comp composition, including the four nitrogen-based molecules or nucleotides referred to as A, T, C, and G in short. So, if life on Earth is made of all the same molecules, how do plants different from animals, animals different from humans, and even human beings different from each other? Well, it turns out that is simply the order in which the, three, four, the four bases appear or are arranged that makes us different. This pattern of arrangement ultimately deter determines each organism's unique character. One of the most powerful teachings of the Holy Quran is the concept of individual. Each person is unique and special in the eyes of God, and this is reflected in our genes. In Surah Al-Hujra, chapter 49, verse 13, Allah says, O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Verily, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. This verse emphasizes that while we are divided into tribes and nations, every person, regardless of their nationality and tribe, is equal in the sight of Allah. So our DNA contains the blueprint of our individuality. And the discipline of genetics allows us to investigate and understand this blueprint in ways that were not possible before. We now have the technology that allows us to read the bases and determine the order in which they appear in different organisms and species. So the complete comp component of the human DNA, or our genome, contains 3.2 billion such bases. The first uh, sequencing of the first human genome took around 13 years to complete, or most of it anyway, and cost over a billion dollars. And one of the simple reasons for this time lag or this, this complex nature of the sequencing was that there's a lot of DNA to sequence. So if we take DNA from one cell of a, of a human body and stretch it out, it's about six feet or two meters long. If we took DNA from a whole average human body and stretch it out, it would stretch to the sun and back over 60 times. That's the amount of DNA we are dealing, dealing with. So in 2007, when Apple launched the first iPhone, yes, there was life before iPhone, the new DNA sequence technology was introduced called the next generation sequencing. And that increased the DNA sequencing output by about 70 fold. So today, we can sequence a 30x or 30 times human genome 
in about three days for less than $1,000. So this allows us to put the pieces of puzzle together and compare genomes of tens of thousands of people and find that needle in the haystack, the variation or the change in the genome sequence that affect our daily lives. In recent years, disciplines like genomics or personalized medicine have, in, have emerged as powerful tools, allowing them to treat uh, tailor treatments to specific needs of individuals and patients. So personalized medicine, also known as precision medicine, is an approach to healthcare that allows tailoring medical treatment to individual patients based on their unique genetic makeup, their lifestyle, their environment, and their medical history. This approach recognized that all, not all patients will respond to the same treatment in the same way, and that treatments that work well for one patient may, may be ineffective or even harmful for some other patients. So personalized medicine relies on the use of advanced technologies such as genomic sequencing and other diagnostic tests to identify individual variations in, the, in disease risk progression and response to treatment. By using this information, to customize treatment plans, healthcare providers can develop more effective and targeted care that is better suited to the specific needs of each patient. Thus, while genomics is the study of genes and their function, personalized medicine refers to, to, to the tailoring of medical treatment to an individual genetic makeup. The use of genomics is making a big impact in our lives in many ways. For example, in genetic disease, large-scale genomics data helps in identifying rare and common genetic disorders. In oncology, uh, genomic approaches, uh, approach helps characterize different types of cancers and their potential target for therapies. In drug discovery, genome information not only help us find appropriate targets for human genomes, but sequence information also determine how we respond to a certain medication, allowing the field of pharmacogenomics to help tailor a person medication based on their personal genome. In prenatal testing, we can analyze the genome of the unborn child by using non-invasive techniques, uh, by taking a small portion of the mom, pregnant mother's blood and analyzing it. And then in infectious disease, of course, we saw the impact of viral surveillance of, in the past two to three years of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, CoV virus, and also the viral genome data uh, was used to help design the vaccines used to control the, uh, the catastrophic death rate of COVID-19. Earlier on in the pandemic, we realized, we realized that, we realized that the SARS-CoV-2 virus was affecting people differently. Some people were getting really sick and ended up in ICUs and died. Others had no symptoms. There was also a group of patients we termed as resistors, who when even exposed to the disease were, did not, were not contracting the, the disease. So we, I was blessed to, uh, to lead the Canadian whole genome sequencing uh, project for Canada to analyze genomes of over 10,000 Canadians, collect the uh, uh, clinical data that was associated uh, with it, and try and understand the genomic architecture that helped impact the, the uh, stratification of, of uh, patients according to their genomes. So when we, were able, when we collected all the data, we were able to compare the 10, 000, over 10,000 genomes to try and find the changes and the variations. So for, for those who are interested, I will not be able to go into a lot of detail today. Uh, I was just given a two-minute notice a minute ago. Uh, but whoever is uh, interested, we have published our latest update in uh, Nature on what we found uh, in, in our project. This is a follow-up on the previous Nature paper we pr presented as a consortium, an international consortium where our data was used to uh, analyze the impact of COVID-19. For example, there were variations in, in, in the interferon uh, signaling genes that stimulated genes essential for fighting infections of viruses. We, there are other group papers that, that if you're interested, you can go and, and, and have a look at. We believe that just as COVID-19 followed SARS and MERS, outbreaks of other severe infectious diseases will follow COVID-19. The knowledge we gain from a national program like HostSeq uh, will allow us to be more informed and better respond to the, to the future pandemics and similar, uh, of similar nature. So I'll just end on this last slide um, with this verse of uh, Surah, Shura chapter 26, verse 80 of the Holy Quran. And when I am ill, it is he who cures me. Highlighting that Allah is the ultimate healer and that all the healing comes from him. So while scientific advances are key to curing diseases 
and human suffering in the world. It is important to recognize and remember the importance of seeking Allah's help in time of illness. Jazakallah.